Hello, hello everyone! I am Alice of KHR Arts and Cloud Orchid Publishing, and today I am going to talk about how, unfortunately, misogyny is alive and well in the writing and publishing world. So, first things first, I want to address what exactly does that mean that misogyny is alive and well in the writing and publishing world? What that means is the age old thing in that even though women are one, allowed to write, and two, that publishers do publish books by women, we still face a lot more challenges and a lot more discrimination and honestly a lot more harassment than male authors. So let's break that down. And because this is such a broad topic, y'all, and honestly I could go on for hours about this because it's such a huge problem in not just the writing community but honestly any community period. <laughs> But I'm going to talk about my personal experiences with this just to kind of narrow down the scope of this topic. So let's break this down. First things first, one of the troubling things that I experienced very on in my career as an author is when I was so excited and I had my first book contract in my hand with Love of the Sea being published by Inksmith Publishing was I had a few people who suggested that I have my books published under a pseudoname. Specifically, they suggested that I either use initials for my first and possibly my middle name and only having my last name, or to create a gender neutral or male sounding pseudonym. And the sad thing with this is because books with either gender neutral or male names do better than books with female names or feminine names on them. And whether this is some sort of unconscious thing that readers have when they're going for books on the bookshelves, or it has to do with subversive ways that publishers promote male authors versus female authors, I really can't on a personal level speak to that, I don't know, but it is a proven thing and many female authors are encouraged to do just that, is to hide their names, whether using acronyms or using pseudonyms, and it sucks. And that was my big thing right off the bat, was that I was like, no, I am a female author and I am going to use my name, whether it's I use my legal name, Lauren A.R. Masterson, or I use my chosen name, Alice Liddell. I'm a female author, and if they don't like it, they can shove it. And I mean, that's kind of my stance on everything in my life is if they don't like it, they can shove it. But it was very important to me that I wanted my name on my books. I didn't want to have some sort of initials. I didn't want to have a male pseudoname. I didn't want to have any of that. And I do believe that our society has, still has a lot of growing to do in order to recognize that females have the same capabilities and contributions as their male counterparts. The second thing is something that I really didn't experience until I was actively doing in-person conventions is experiencing what's known as the old guard in the publishing and writing world. And I say these things as separate entities, the writing and publishing worlds, because there are writers who are people who have not published books yet. And then there's the publishing world, which are writers that have books published. And I'll explain to you all why this differentiation is important in this case. At conventions, selling my books, and it's very obvious that me being all dressed up, being my sparkly happy self with all of my books, and people coming up to me and being like, who wrote all these books? Well, I sure did. And they're like, and immediately their face will just be like, disbelief and it's not the same as when people are in absolute disbelief of oh my god you one singular person wrote all of these books that is more of the like wow i am super impressed and are you serious right now no there's a different look of disbelief that they give of the really you did this all by yourself you sure you didn't have someone else help you with this the incompetence disbelief the first time I experienced it, it was very confusing and just really left a bad taste in my mouth. And 
it kept happening. Not super often, thank goodness, because as we all know, what happens to the old guard? They die out, quite literally, because they're the older generation, and in the newer generation, we are giving bigger and better voices to female POC and LGBTQ authors, which is just awesome that we are giving disenfranchised people a bigger voice, which they absolutely deserve. And remember, giving these disenfranchised voices a bigger voice does not mean that they are being given more or better treatment than male authors. It just means we're leveling the playing field, y'all. That's all we're doing here. Equality, not more or less. So just a little disclaimer for y'all before y'all jump and flame me in the comments. So that disbelief of are you really sure you did this all by yourself? Followed up with the, well, they can't be that good then, now can they? And I've all but gotten patted on the head by some of these people who have treated me that way. And I do know that it is a combination of both me being female as well as me being younger. And yes, the writing and publishing world is definitely an older game in that if you are somebody who's 50 or older, you're going to be given a lot more credibility and a lot more respect than somebody who's, say, in their 20s or their 30s. And for whatever reason, that's just the way that the industry is. I guess they think that you need to have a certain amount of life experience or wisdom in order to be a writer, which is not true, but there are a lot of people that believe that, and a lot of that fuels the whole ageism thing that's also alive and well in the publishing and writing industry, which sucks, but that's a totally different topic. I digress. Now, this whole separation between the writing and the publishing world. A lot of these people that all but patted me on the head and treated me like, oh, that's so cute that you think you can write books, were older cis white males. Sorry, guys, but those were the men that treated me like that 90% of the time. <laughs> um, there were a few women that did it to me, too, but far more older men. And a lot of them were not published authors. So y'all, wrap your brains around this. I, who have published several titles, am selling my titles at a convention, and these men, who have published not a single book yet, but are currently writing a book, or maybe books, plural, think that they are somehow better, smarter, more capable than me, even though I'm already if you really want it to talk in those terms, ahead of them in the game, and that I already have several titles published, and not just self-published, but also traditionally published, so I've even done it the way that they only see as credible. And somehow I still am lacking in credibility compared to them. And I'm not here to flame anybody, I'm not here to bash anybody. This is just to illustrate the struggle of being a female author in this world that is largely full of old stodgy men that just don't take us seriously. And if you're a younger person, you get that slammed on top of you as well. Another one of the big things is in promoting your book. And that means having to participate in the grand old land of the internet and social media. And that means that you come in contact with all sorts of people. And while I said that, yes, I have gotten that like pat on the head from even women who think, wow, you're an idiot. You totally have no credibility, even though you wrote all these books. It happens a lot more online with women behaving that way than men, but men still make up the majority in that kind of behavior. As well as, of course, I have in my personal experiences. And remember, I am basing this on my personal experiences. I'm sure there are plenty of female authors out there who have had much different experiences. And honestly, I would not be surprised if there are male authors out there who, for whatever reason, have experienced their own challenges with being taken seriously and having credibility. And all of that is valid. But we're talking about my experiences here. So, yeah. <laughs> Little disclaimer for y'all. So, a lot of times the women who try to cut down my credibility when it comes to social media and the internet in general, they accuse me of being vapid and vain and of course being a whore because somehow my sexuality has anything to do with my ability as an author, but here we are, you know. 
If all else fails on the internet, she's a woman. Call her a whore. That's the world we live in. I digress. But yes, my all-time favorite was when in the background of one of my little pictures that I took, I don't really remember what I took it for, but it was definitely one of those kind of pictures where I was sitting at my desk and I was holding one of my books to take a picture and you could see all of my stuff in the background and this was before I had a green screen. So you can see all my crap in the background and you could see my closet in the background because the door was open on it and this woman made a comment saying that I was not a real author because apparently according to her real authors don't have so many clothes and that I needed to be more humble and live more simply in order to be a real author. Now I know what y'all are thinking is what does that have to do with writing? And that's unfortunately another weird stereotypical thing with the old guard is that they think that in order to be a real author, you have to be like some weirdo hermit that like, you know, as I mentioned in another one of my videos is, you know, a closet goblin and doesn't really interact with other people and also the whole alcoholism thing, which I don't know how that got started and why, but here we are, is also be an alcoholic and like not value your appearance and not value clothes and you're a real author. So I don't know what's up with that, but that's a part of the writing community and it's gross. And no, <laughs> I do not subscribe to any of the above. Too bad. I don't care if that's what you think. It's not true. I 100% will sh roll up to conventions as the prettiest, sparkliest person and be like, I sell books, yay! And if you don't like it, that's too bad. Because <laughs> that's a big part of my branding and who I am. And I've talked about that in some of my other videos on how it's important to create your branding with selling your books, is that you as the author are a part of your brand with your books. So that is an important thing to keep in mind. A part of my branding in literally everything that I do, not just my books, is that I enjoy dress up. I enjoy doing things with my appearance. And that does not take away from my credibility or my talents. And people who think that it does are shallow and obviously just have a bone to pick. So that's another one of the example, the unfortunate examples. And yes, as many people will say, you can ignore stupid comments on the internet. You can delete stupid DMs. But the larger problem at hand is that these are overarching attitudes in these communities. And that can overall be harmful. Do I take the lady seriously who told me I should go live like a hermit and not have pretty clothes? No, I told her exactly where to shove it because that's dumb. But the fact that there is a unfortunately large majority of people that believe in this kind of stuff directly in our industry is a problem and you can't delete that out of your ability to function as an author and that there y'all is the problem is having to fight some of these old guard mentalities which frequently leak into general society and how people perceive authors and their expectations which then does erode at your credibility and your ability to sell books which sucks <laughs> The last one that I'll leave with y'all is that I have had older men in person to my face at conventions literally try to explain to me how based on their completely incorrect, might I add, thoughts and their facts on how the female mind is inferior to the male mind and that no matter how hard I try that my books will never be as good as or as successful as a male author's books because I am just not capable of reaching that which is utter nonsense first of all. <laughs> Second of all the fact that these men have the audacity to say this to my face and to say it in a completely, as they feel, factual statement. Not even that they are trying to be mean or they're trying to insult me. Like, it's not like these men were angry at me and felt that they needed to react or lash out to me. No, it's these men felt that they needed to impart this wisdom upon me so that I can better understand my place in the publishing world. And that's way scarier than some guy telling me 
that I'm dumb because they're mad at me. Because as we all know, a lot of the things we say when we're mad are just that. They're just dumb things we say when we're mad. But when somebody says something like that to you and they are just absolutely, this is the lay of the land, this is factual information, that's incredibly harmful and scary. And so the fact that there are still people, not just out there as readers, but people actually actively in the industry that actually have control over our success. So professional book reviewers, professional people in the publishing industry, such as publishers and editors and agents and just, you know, any part of that chain who think these things is a big part of why there's such a big struggle for female authors and how a lot of these harmful thoughts can really impact our ability to see success, which y'all, it sucks. And I know I've said that a lot, but it's true. So that is a big thing that a lot of newer publishing companies are trying to fight against and why a lot of authors are honestly turning to self-publishing is so that they can work around these misogynistic constraints that have been put on them for really no good reason. So this is a big hurdle in the publishing world. And as I said, this is based on my personal experience. So I can't speak to specifically being a person of color author or being a person who is an LGBTQ person writing about LGBTQ themes, which I'm sure is just whole other levels of challenges and difficulties in this same arena. I don't have personal experience with that, so I can't speak to it, but I imagine it's about the same, if not worse. So yeah, just to kind of give y'all a little bit of some scalding hot tea, open your eyes a little bit to some of the not so pretty behind the scenes stuff with this industry. Misogyny is still alive and well, but the old guard is shrinking, so that is the good news. And we are doing way more in the new guard to try and punch up those voices so that we can level the playing field, y'all. So I hope this video was helpful. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like. And if you're new, subscribe. All right, y'all. I will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.